creating network and rack diagrams. We're going to learn how to create a network diagram, organize network shapes in a diagram, create a rack diagram, add equipment to a rack diagram, and set and modify drawing scales. Both versions of Visio contain a basic network diagram template. The professional version contains a detailed network diagram in addition to the basic. However, you can learn all you need to know by creating the basic version. In truth, the biggest difference between the basic and detailed network diagram templates is the detailed network diagram offers more stencils. In the interest of making sure every student gets the most from this course, we're going to cover the basic network diagram in this lesson. To create a basic network diagram, go to the File tab and click on New. Go to the Network category and select the basic network diagram template. Take a minute to notice the stencils in the shape window. To get started, place an Ethernet shape onto the drawing page. You should place it so it's in the vertical centre of the page. Now, resize the shape by dragging on a side handle so that the shape is 4 inches long. Use the rulers for measurement. The width bar located on the status bar shows you the current length too. You can use that as a guide. Label the Ethernet shape Store 1. Next, drag a service shape onto the page. Place it above the Ethernet shape and to the left. Select the Ethernet shape. Drag a yellow control handle towards the centre of the server. Place the printer shape above and to the right of the Ethernet shape. And then three PC shapes in the computers and monitor stencil. Put these PCs below the Ethernet shape. Connect the Ethernet shape to the shapes you've just added. Next, drag a bounding box around all the shapes. Drag and move them towards the bottom left of the page. In the upper right side of the page, drag another Ethernet shape. This is under the network and peripheral stencil. Label this shape Store 2. Place a printer shape, two laptop computers, and three computers so it looks like this. Place a router in the centre of the page. Connect each of the Ethernet shapes to the router. And that's all there is to it. As you can see, creating a basic network diagram isn't difficult at all. Now you can add data to the shapes, or link data to the diagram if you wish. Now that you've created your network diagram, you may want to organise the shapes. We're going to teach you how in this section by teaching you to add a background shape, then grouping the shapes in the network. Let's start by right clicking on the page. In the mini toolbar that appears, click the drop down arrow for drawing tools. We're going to use a rectangle tool to draw a rectangle around the first network that we created. However, the rectangle is blocking our view of the network. That's because it is in front of the network. We want it to appear as a background behind the network. To fix this, go to the Home tab and select Send to Back. It's still a little too dark, so we're going to change that now. 
We're going to select the shape and then right click on it and choose format shape. Click the triangle besides fill. Adjust the transparency. Next, we're going to group the shapes. We covered how to do this earlier in the course. However, if you don't remember, drag a bounty box around the rectangle and all the shapes. Go to the Home tab, and then in the Group drop-down, select Group. You can now follow the same steps with the Network Labeled Store too. So we right-click and select Rectangle. Draw a rectangle around these shapes. Select Send to Back. Under the Transparency, enter a number such as 50. Now select all of the shapes again. In the Home tab, Select Group from the Group drop-down menu. A rack, by definition, is a metal frame that holds devices such as servers, hard disk drives, modems, and more. It looks like a shelf where components can be stacked on top of each other and screwed into the front. A rack diagram, in turn, is a drawing of a computer rack that you can then add equipment to, such as shapes in Visio. Let's learn to create a rack diagram and then add the equipment to it. To start with, let's go to the File tab and select New. Choose the network category and then open the rack diagram template. When you open this template, you notice that it contains four stencils. Three of the four stencils contain equipment and rack shapes. Click the rack mounted equipment stencil in the shapes window. In previous lessons, we've started by dragging the shape onto the page. This time, let's do a little more setup work. Go to the page tab at the bottom of the page in the drawing window. Double click on the current page name. Type in overview and press enter when you're finished. Now right click the page name and select insert. You'll then see the page setup dialog box. Click on the page properties tab. In the name field, type a name for the new page. We've chosen network center. Click on the measurement units drop down and select meters. This is the measurements used for the new page. Now click on the Drawing Scale tab. Click Predefined Scale. Then select Metric, then select 1 to 10. Now click OK. Next, you can drag a rack shape from the Shapes window onto your page. You've already set the measurement units and the page scale. Because of this, the rack goes from the top to the bottom margin of the page. Now that you've drawn your rack, it's time to start adding equipment. The shapes that you add to your equipment rack look 2D, unlike the shapes you've worked with thus far. They are 1D shapes, so you can glue them to the ends. They just look two-dimensional. However, you'll drag them and glue them just the same. Let's drag a power supply and place it at the bottom of the rack. Notice that the sides of the shape can be glued to the rack. This is marked by green. Also notice that the U height appears to the left, 2U. The U height is the number of rack units the component occupies. Next, drag the server shape and place it in the centre of the rack. Note the default server shape of 8U. Let's resize it by dragging its handles until it's 3U. We're going to add more servers to our rack, but we want them all to be 3U. To do this, we're going to select our server, then press Ctrl D 5 times for 5 more servers. Place these above and below the current server. Drag a router shape and place it above the power supply. Place a keyboard tray above the router. Place a shelf above the keyboard tray. Now place a monitor from the freestanding rack equipment stencil on top of the shelf. We might need to move our servers up a little bit to include these in. To do this, you could drag a bounding box around all the servers, 
then move them all up. Go to the freestanding rack equipment, select monitor and drag that onto the rack. Now we need to move our servers back into position. You can now go through and add the shape data to your shapes in the drawing. This is an important part of creating a rack diagram because it lets you know where all of your equipment is located. It goes without saying that it would be impossible to draw the actual size of an equipment rack on a page. However, that doesn't mean that we don't want the actual size representations on the page. When we create a drawing in Visio, whether it's a rack with equipment or a floor plan of an office, we want to make sure that the shapes we add to our drawing represent actual objects and accurately represent the amount of space they would inhabit. For example, you might have a drawing the scale that's one to one. This means that one inch of drawing space equals one foot of actual space. When we created the rack diagram, we changed the ratio between the drawings and the real equipment. We changed it to one to 10. In that instance, we made the change before we started to create the diagram. However, there may be times when you need to change the drawing scale after you've created the drawing. Let's learn how to do that. Go to the page for which you want to change the scale. Right click on the page tab. Select page setup, then choose the drawing scale tab. Next, select predefined scale. Choose a predefined scale or create your own scale values with a custom scale. If you want to change the measurement units, go to the page properties tab in the same dialog box. Go to the measurement units and choose the unit you want to use. Click apply to save the changes you've made. When you validate a flowchart or diagram, you check it against a list of rules to discover any errors. Visio 2013 will detect things like missing connectors. If connectors aren't attached to other shapes, for example, this will appear as a problem. To validate a flowchart or diagram, go to the Process tab and click on Check Diagram. From the drop down box it appears, click on Check Diagram. If you don't have any rules set up for your diagram, this message will appear. This is likely because it's not a flowchart or a process diagram. Let's open a process diagram. Now let's perform the same steps by clicking on Check Diagram. You'll see this window open with a list of possible problems. If you want to ignore an issue that Visio points out, right click on the issue and choose either ignore this issue or ignore this rule. When you choose ignore this rule, Visio will then hide all issues that were caused by this rule. You can import validation rules into a diagram, either from other diagrams you've created in Visio 2013 or those you created with earlier versions of Visio. To do this, go to the process tab, then on the check diagram drop down box, click on import rules from. The rule sets for flowchart and BPMN are available to any diagram. However, they're meant to be used with process diagrams. If any other diagrams that have rules are open, you'll see the file names listed. Select a rule set or open a drawing. The rules will then be imported. You can then view which rule sets are active for a drawing by going to process tab, clicking on check diagram, and click on rules to check. Rule sets that are active have a check mark next to them. To make a rule inactive, click on the rule set to remove the check mark. Thank you.